Welcome back to the show. There was another horrific mass shooting yesterday. We've come to expect that in the wake of those hellish events, the NRA actually grows stronger. But for once, that might not be true. A power struggle between the NRA's top leaders. There's some real drama playing out with the NRA convention. Oliver North has been asked to step down. Wayne LaPierre went public saying that Oliver North was threatening to take the NRA's board a bunch of accusations against him. Ooh, are you there, Marie Kondo? Because we got ourselves a mess on aisle. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> the NRA's power struggle is between these two gun baby crypt keepers. The bad man on the left is Wayne LaPierre, who has served as the NRA CEO since 1991. You might remember LaPierre from that time he responded to the Sandy Hook shooting like this. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. I call on Congress today to act immediately to appropriate whatever is necessary to put armed police officers in every single school in this nation. Mmm, time to dust off the trusty graphics package we've had since 1991. <gasps> Fuck you, Wayne LaPierre. Mmm, that sentiment still stands. The piece of shit on the right is recently ousted NRA President Oliver North, best known for his role in the Iran-Contra affair in which he helped America sell weapons to bad people so we could give money to other bad people. So basically, NRA material. LaPierre and North have been locked in a battle in which LaPierre accused North of attempting to blackmail him into resigning. LaPierre also claims North threatened to release damaging information on LaPierre and the NRA, including allegations against a staff member of sexual harassment and evidence that LaPierre spent nearly half a million dollars on clothes and travel. How does Wayne LaPierre have an exorbitant <laughs> wardrobe budget? Did he take all his guns into a men's warehouse and demand they sell him 300 of the same suit? <laughs> The slap fight between LaPierre and North was itself all a part of a bigger conflict between the NRA and their longtime PR and ad agency, Ackerman McQueen, or as they affectionately call it, ACMAC, which sounds more like a character from Oklahoma who dies of dysentery. <laughs> Mac has been working for the NRA since the 80s and is responsible for most of their public image from Charlton Heston's From My Cold Dead Hands to NRA TV, which is a very normal online network. It <laughs> delivers 24 hours a day of not just gun porn, but also every right-wing smear, conspiracy, and lie. Not all Muslims are radicalized, but all radicalized terrorists are Muslims. It's an invasion under the guise of migration. I believe she could have been talked into remembering something she may not have. It's not mass shootings or killing children in overwhelming numbers. It's black on black crime. To all the kids from Parkland getting ready to use your First Amendment to attack everyone else's Second Amendment, I wish a hero like Blaine had been at Marjorie Douglas High School last month because your classmates would still be alive and no one would know your names. I've looked at Thomas and Friends at their pictures and I see gray and blue, and I'm really, really struggling to understand how in the world there isn't any diversity in any of this. Oh, was it because I see it? It was the white hoods. Oh, oh, so there's also comedy. You know, putting a KKK hood on Thomas the Tank Engine doesn't make him more scary. He's already terrifying. <laughs> The bizarre and disturbing contents of NRA TV actually aren't inconsequential. Some members of the NRA have been worried for a while that NRA TV distracted audiences from focusing on gun ownership, leading those members to push for the new NRA slogan, hey, we're shooting people weird, not KKK Thomas the Tank Engine weird. <laughs> Ackerman McQueen is also the brain behind Carry Guard, which is essentially NRA's insurance if you murder someone. A bad guy walked in and opened fire. While others were panicked, one man was legally armed and well-trained. The police know it's a lawful shooting, but there'll still be a long night of interrogations. And the story will be on the news before he's home. Which means lots of lawyers will contact the dead thug's family. This is why the NRA created NRA Carry Guard. The most comprehensive training, legal protection, and financial coverage available to those who carry. Oh my God, you guys, Dana Lash did something real bad in that 7-Eleven. Buy her insurance or she'll do it again. <laughs> 
Perry Guard has also been the subject of various legal battles, which is too bad for the NRA since it was intended to secure their long-term prosperity. That's why I'd like to introduce them to my product, NRA Carry Guard Carry Guard, which protects you when your own ad agency fucks you out of your pro-gun money. <laughs> and for this steady stream of racism and grift, the NRA pays Ackerman McQueen more than $40 million a year. Actually, the NRA doesn't currently know what they're paying Ackerman McQueen $40 million a year for. They're suing to find out, and ACMAC won't tell them. But we do know some of what they're spending the money on. They paid LaPierre's rival Oliver North a million dollars to host 12 episodes of his own web series, and then they only made four, which is crazy because I thought Ollie and Cars selling guns for Contras was really gonna catch on. <laughs> ACMAC has bled the NRA dry. An analysis of NRA finances showed that over the last 11 years, they were in the red for seven. The NRA is now hemorrhaging money so badly, they've had to freeze employee pensions, take away water coolers, and get rid of free coffee in their office, which is outrageous because when coffee is outlawed, only outlaws will have coffee. <laughs> Another reason NRA employees need to share squares of toilet paper is that the organization spent an unprecedented amount, more than $50 million on the 2016 elections. However, that too seems to have backfired. The organization reported a total income drop of $55 million back in 2017. In 2017, their membership dues, Shannon, plunged $35 million bucks, and it lost another $35 million in gifts and contributions. What does that tell you? And couple that with the changing views on common sense gun laws in this country. What does that tell you? Without a president threatening to take away their guns, members are less motivated to pay up. It's like how my college boyfriend only went down on me when I threatened to dump him, so I threatened to dump him twice a day. <laughs> Gun owners just no longer feel the need to eat out the NRA, and I know that's a gross, unfair metaphor, and I apologize. We checked with our research department, and they confirmed nobody in the NRA has ever been eaten out. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you get butterflies thinking about the pro-murder gun lobby going bankrupt, here's something that'll really get you going. Senate Democrats are now looking into alleged shady financial dealing, dealings of the NRA, which could threaten the gun rights group tax exempt, exempt status. So let's just quickly talk about um, the, the New York Attorney General's investigation into their tax exempt status. How existential a threat would that be to its survival? If it loses its tax exempt status, then the NRA will really cease to exist. <gasps> the NRA could cease to exist? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me cream my jeans on national television. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's pretty unlikely that the NRA will actually fold. The NRA is a lot like measles. Whenever we think it'll go away and stop killing people, some idiot brings it back. That said, <laughs> New York State's investigation into the NRA's shitty finances is very bad for them. And unlike the latest mass shooting, it's something they'll actually have to care about. We'll be right back.